Well, you know, I mean, it's nice to get the positive feedback and that lets you know to kind of keep doing more of what you're doing. Um, I do like it when students give some specific feedback and I try to, I mean, if it's reasonable to implement it, you know, I wish we would have spent more time on this or you're too slow or too fast or, you know, this particular unit was super confusing. I try to, you know, make those some focus areas. It's easy to create a little survey for your students, you know, when you're a couple weeks in or midway through the semester and, you know, ask some specific questions, you know, the workload, how is it? Those kinds of things and, and then use that feedback. And I've done that lots of times throughout my teaching. My strategy is to try and get information, even peripheral information to the understanding of their response was or how it was incorrect to see, try and get a sense of where they're at and then try and have them go through and work through the process to provide the answer. Because simply me telling them the answer uh, might initially seem like that's what they're looking for, but ultimately that active learning process, engaging them to be involved. So my strategy is to do my utmost to not try and just regurgitate answers, but to engage the student in a way that they are involved in coming up with that solution, the correct answer, and piecing it together. So again, I mentioned you know, this idea of summative and formative assessment. Right. I think um, you know, formative is better instead at the end, you know, right then and now. I mean, I te I'll teach our orientation course. Um, who wants to be teachers? In the second class, I said, you're going to get up in front and present on anything. Let me see if you can teach me something, you know. Yeah. I think assessment and feedback should be continual. I mean, it's something that we just don't do at a stop point. It's something yeah. that's saying, you know, we should be able to say, you know, stop. Maybe you can do this a little different. Yeah. I recognize, I say, you know, I tried to do this. I had different expectations. I had high expectations of this. And, uh, and oftentimes when I try something new, I tell them I'm trying something new. So they, they know this is something I've never done. I don't have experience on. I need feedback on and I need to tweak it. I apologize. I just say, you know, I'm going to make changes either this semester if I have the chance or um, I will grade it very leniently because that's if that's the problem you know like this semester it happened that I gave them a really hard exam and I was just very lenient in the grading you know and that's you know I recognize that I recognize it was a long complex more involved exam than past years and you move on you just you just tell them that was your failure you recognize it and this is how you're gonna move on this is I think there's nothing wrong with saying like you know last class that was a total disaster you know that's my bad I feel like, you know, this was kind of my reasoning. I, I envisioned it going like this and it went like this. So maybe let's try this. And you know, you're constantly having to kind of redirect and try new things, I think, I do. As far as the questions, I'm usually pretty honest and I just say, you know, I don't know, that's a good question. But I do really try to follow up and say, sometimes I open it up to other comments. I mean, I see if other people have insight into it and then I usually end up, you know, looking into it more and coming back next class. So if it's something that was totally off the grid, I'll usually just like after class message that person, like look into it and say, you know, this is kind of what I found out. But if it's something that really pertains and will be relevant for everybody, then I'll address it like the next class and just say, you know, so-and-so asked this and to be honest, I really didn't know, but I learned this and it's pretty cool and you know, yeah, great question. <laughs> you get nice comments, you get neutral comments and you get some pretty nasty ones too. Sure. And, I, and I used to think, am I the only one who gets really uh, negative feedback and I, I think that's pretty universal but um, one there's a few things that have helped me support group I guess of our circle of fac other faculty where I can kind of talk through you know some frustrations or is this do you think this is really the case and this is what I did and this is what they said and what do you think that means and sometimes they're just able to objectively say something that just switches it for me and, and then it's not so personal or so inflammatory <laughs> yeah. and um, or they can say oh yeah I've had the same sort of you know comment before or um, another thing that that um, that I've actually done with another um, colleague in our college he, he came to me after he got some pretty poor reviews and he was 
you know, a first time teacher and uh, the odds were just kind of stacked against him. Yeah. And he told me a story and I thought, oh man, I've, I can so relate. <laughs> and then um, he said, I know I have really bad avowals, but I don't want to read them. And, and he says, but I know I need to change some things, so how do I, uh, how do I do that? And I said, well, would you be comfortable if I read your evaluations and just kind of filter them and then like pick out some main points of things that you're doing well, things you can improve on. And uh, he said, okay. And um, anyway, that process was, was helpful for both of us, I think. And, and so uh, we've continued that, actually. Oh, nice. And um, another thing is um, sometimes I, <laughs> like I designate a day to read through uh, comments. But then I kind of make tally marks on uh, here are um, comments that are really constructive and useful. And here's some where somebody was just having a bad day. Yeah. And, and I used to think of constructive feedback as only negative, but I don't think it is. I think constructive feedback is anything that's useful. And so, like the positive comments, uh, I, I keep track of as well and say, well, this gets a tally mark for being really useful, and this uh, wasn't so useful. But then when I look at the um, percentages afterwards, like the like the percentage of positive is always a lot higher than it feels like after I've read through it. Sure. Because I like I give more weight to the negative ones. Right. But in reality, the when you look at the raw numbers, the negative ones don't really stack up that much. So uh, so there are a lot of different ways that I do that. I do the mid-semester evaluations and that's really helpful for me one of the main reasons being because then I can make changes for that last half of the semester and those students benefit from those changes. You know, idea evaluations are really great because you get really detailed feedback, but it doesn't benefit the students that are in that class, you know, that semester. It benefits the future students. And so I, that's why I like mid-semester evaluations. I've also done when I've made big changes to classes, like when I went to flipped, I would do specific evaluations on different activities that I did in the classroom, having them rank the activities or tell me what activities they liked or disliked and why that might be so then I could make changes for future years. I uh, do pre and post assessments in a lot of my classes so I can compare their knowledge before take before learning any in information in the classroom but then also after the fact and uh, looking at uh, you know what that uh, means not only for their knowledge gain but also back towards my teaching. Was there anything that I could have taught better? Is there anything that I missed? What could I change because of these results that I'm getting? So those are a few things that I do. I do really pay close attention to the feedback, the qualitative feedback that I get on my idea evaluations because I really encourage my students to be honest and to provide information that could really benefit me and the course in the future. And I feel like students do a really good job of that. So if I'm seeing students, many students providing the same type of feedback, that's definitely something that I try to consider and make changes to in a future year if possible. I have a few different specific uh, uh, formative assessments. One is problem sets that are last a whole week. Oh, okay. So we essentially in my classes um, cover one chapter per week and there's one problem set per chapter. And, and there's some variability on that, but, but more or less that's how it is. So there's, their homework is you go home and I have it all written out very clearly on a calendar. You watch these videos before class on each day. And every time we introduce a new chapter, we start the week with a quiz. So that's another formative assessment, low stakes quiz, where the students um, uh, are asked questions about the videos that they watched. Then they work on problem set that's due usually by the end of the week. So that's another formative assessment, low stakes. And uh, so those are kind of two genuine measurable metrics with numbers attached to them that I use. One thing that I also do though is in, included in my class structure is I let my students hand in their problem sets with and receive feedback from me as many times as they want with no point punishment all the way up to the due date. After the due date, their, their assignments are only worth 50% because I post the answer key the next morning yeah. on Canvas. So I tell my students, <clears throat> give me your problem set. I will grade what you've got. And anywhere you've got a mistake, I'll hand it back to you and then I'll talk you through it. 
And I do that for my students at the distance sites as well, all in real time. So I've got students all over the state, sometimes at five, six different sites spread across hundreds of miles, all watching me live. How do they hand me their problem set? I have sitting at my lectern, my computer with my email open, and I tell them, send it to my email. I have my email sitting there and it just says, boom, email comes in. And then I open it up and then I have the software where I can open up their problem set and I can type right onto their PDF or onto an image if they sent me a picture. So sometimes I'll just say, snap a picture with your phone, send it to my email and I'll open it up on my computer and I can type right over it feedback and then send it back. And I don't just send it back to this one student who sent it to me, I send it back to the entire group. So in group emails, so that's live back and forth, back and forth, no point punishment all the way up to due date. And this is a way where I can see where are the questions that everyone is struggling with. I, I see that a lot in my classes because the general chemistry classes I teach, I have students who've taken honors in AP chemistry in high school and I have students, I have some students who've never taken a chemistry class before. And so there are definitely things that I realized that I um, thought I was saying and that everybody knew that, that they don't know. And so some of that feedback has, has been from student evaluations even, um, things that I, sometimes they're the formal student evaluations and sometimes I try to do like mid-semester evaluations. So one of the things I've tried to do is there's a certain pace that's required in these classes that unfortunately I don't have time to go back and cover all of the background information that every student might miss. But I tr I've tried to create supplemental resources whether that's additional lecture videos or some maybe additional practice problems that my students can all access so that I'm not slowing the entire class down, but also making sure that they get that information that they need if they want it. Um, as far as the students who are at the, the top of the class, I try to not spend too much time on material that isn't necessarily within the scope of the class because that can be confusing to other students, but to at least kind of give them a little bit of an idea of where we would go from here.